I study seagrasses because many years I studied the impacts of climate change on other organisms in the ocean. And for me, through this research, I, what I saw and what I, I learned was truly alarming. And I, I really felt like I needed to help provide solutions rather than, than continue to provide answers on, on, on the impacts of climate change on these organisms. I grew up in a very small village with, there were few people around and even fewer kids around, so I spent a lot of my time along uh, the St. Lawrence estuary where I grew up. I lived there for 18 years in Beachcomb for 365 uh, days of the year, winter to summer, and um, I through the years saw change. First the frogs disappeared, then the juvenile fish, and then large adult fish started washing up, and seabirds also on the beaches. And that um, really made me very sad. It's the reason why I wanted to become a doctor of the sea, so I could find a way to help that system recover. The reason we need to communicate the the importance of a healthy seagrass meadow here in Germany and all over the world is that it provides a multitude of benefits to you and me and to the rest of society. So for example, they really increase biodiversity. They provide a home to all sorts of other animals and plants or algae. Um, and they are also really beneficial to fisheries. So they provide um, a nursery ground for for juvenile fish. The most important and more kind of new uh, aspect of their benefits to society is blue carbon, of course. So they capture our emissions and bury them underground. Seagrass was really the perfect way for me to lend my expertise to the problem of climate change and provide solutions through sea seagrass blue carbon. Blue carbon is the carbon dioxide that's being taken up from the atmosphere by coastal vegetated systems like mangroves, salt marshes, and seagrass meadows. Um, and then they're buried underground. And unbeknownst to most, Germany is teeming with, um, with seagrass meadows and salt marshes. Um, so we have car blue carbon potential here in Germany. And then there's a, a huge potential to scale that up or, or, or through restoration almost 3,000 kilometers squared. I do, uh, I do a lot of painting and drawing and a mix of these together. And this art has allowed me to access a subconscious level and tends to influence the more um, abstract art and ways of thinking, the more unique ways of thinking, um, which, uh, some might think distracts from my science, but in fact, it helps me look at it in a different way, using a different lens. Anyone can make a repetitive observation, but it really takes leaps of imaginations to come up with hypotheses and then find ways to, do, to, to test these hypotheses. Um, yeah, and we see, if we look through history, we see that distinguished scientists like Nobel laureates had uh, many artistic hobbies. So their artistic hobbies have allowed them to approach technical problems in not only a logical way, but using um, play, imagination, and intuition, um, which are really qualities that the arts hone in a, in a person. And so we have a lot to learn from the artistic journey, I think.